For sequencing data, we get raw count data. That is, we get a non-negative integer, which represents the number of reads you observe in the sample. However, different concentrations may have been used for different samples, so number of reads may differ based on sample concentration. Also, there are different binding affinities. That means there may be lower abundance depending upon the experimental protocols. As a reminder from the alignment module, RNA sequencing assays produce a FASTQ file, and after some pre-processing steps, such as trimming adapters and removing contaminated reads, you align the FASTQ files to a reference genome or reference transcriptome. This gives you a SAM or BAM file. Then you use other software to count the number of reads that map to the transcripts. Tools include Cufflinks and HTSeq. Regardless, you'll get a data matrix. For RNA sequencing data, let X sub JK represent the unnormalized count of reads mapped to gene J in sample K. The total number of map reads in the sample is the library size. This is related to the amount of sample loaded and the experimental protocol. The gene length is also related to the count. That is, the longer the gene, it will break up into more fragments, so more reads will be expected to map back to longer genes. L sub J is the number of base pairs in a gene. GC content can also affect hybridization. The tighter the cDNA will fold, the more difficult to fragment, and fewer fragments mean fewer reads. So GC content may affect the number of reads. However, when analyzing across samples, that is not a big deal because the same gene has the same sequence for all samples, so there is not sample-specific bias. So GC content and gene length do not affect analyses across samples. There are different ways to normalize RNA-seq data. The first is reads per million. This is the number of reads mapped to a particular gene per million reads in the sample. Thus, RPM is only normalized to library size. This is okay if you are only comparing each gene across multiple samples. Second, RPKM, which is number of reads mapped per kilo base pairs in the gene length per million reads. Therefore, RPKM is normalized to both the library size and to the gene length. A related method, FPKM, is the number of fragments mapped to a particular gene per kilo base pairs in the gene length and million reads in the sample. In paired end sequencing, two ends represent one cDNA fragment. FPKM counts the number of fragments instead of the number of reads. So two ends from the same gene that are paired count as one. Note, when using RPKM, that would count as two. Often, both reads map to the gene, but occasionally only one of the two ends map. These are improper pairs. That may indicate more complex events, such as novel isoforms or fusion genes. TPM, or transcripts per million, is somewhat new. The total number of reads is affected by some large genes because long genes give more reads than short genes. Long genes then dominate the library size. So for each gene, Divide by the gene length first and express this as reads per kilo base pairs. Then divide that result by total RPK. Instead of normalizing by library size, RPK divided by total RPK times a million. So TPM is how many transcripts per million transcripts. Calculating gene length is not as straightforward as you may think. You could take the sum of the length of all exons, but when there are multiple splicing isoforms, one gene may have different exons included, 
so different isoforms are shorter than the sum of all exons. Some suggest taking median or average of all isoforms. If you are interested in comparing within gene, summing exons is probably okay. The effective gene length, L tilde, could also be used. Some methods also consider GC content because there may be different length distributions due to GC bias. In this module's active learning lab, you will gain some hands-on experience with RNA-seq data. In summary, normalization methods assume that only a few genes should vary significantly. Data correction is only acceptable when the systematic error is known and well characterized, and when it is a shortcut to performing the experiment again with the systematic error removed from the procedure. Adequate normalization can reduce false positives by removing unwanted systematic variation that is not of interest. For RNA-seq assays, raw counts can also be used for downstream analysis. Here are some useful references.